Hey guys! So, I have been wanting to do this video for a long time and I feel like now is the time because I feel like I have been on so many horrible, horrible Tinder dates that if I express it, if I share them with you, if I put it out into the universe that my dating life has been real crappy for the last two years, it'll, good karma will come back on me and it'll be like, oh my god, that's so crazy that we kept giving Ashley such crappy men. We should give her someone good now. It's so crazy that she has so many horrible dating stories. We should give her a good one now. Anyways, let's get into this video. I am excited to share some of these with you. I have one big one for you today, but don't worry if you like the series, give it a thumbs up because I have so many more and I would love to share all of my horrible, horrible Tinder experiences with you because that's mainly how I meet men, even though it has so far had a 1% success rate. It's not going well. Maybe it's because I put out videos like Tinder Takeover, you should check that out down below, where Justin takes over my Tinder and says things like, oh my god, fuck me in the ass. That might be why I'm not getting any good karma here, but I digress, let's get into the story. This is the one that I just tell people. This is like my number one go-to story. If you've seen me on You Now, this is something I tell all the time. It's just the one that's like, it gets the biggest reaction usually out of people. And that's why it is my favorite looking back and my least favorite when I was in the moment because it was fucking awful. <laughs> so here's the backstory. I don't remember this guy's name. That's how many Tinder dates I go on. So we're gonna call him should have thought of this. We're gonna call him, I'm trying to think of something clever, nothing's coming to mind, we're gonna call him Bob. So me and Bob had been talking for a couple of days and the conversation seemed really good. And I had just gotten out of a thing with the guy, so I was like, yes, there's not only horrible people in the world, there's people who are funny over text and they're witty, this is great. And then we make plans to meet up. I get to Tim Hortons, Bob is there, everything goes downhill from there. Um, so I get to Tim Hortons, Bob is there, he's just like, I'm not expecting people to dress to the nines and tens, but he literally looks like he has not showered in five days. Like at all. He hasn't showered, he didn't bother to put on deodorant, like again, I'm not expecting you to look like your best self for fucking Tim Hortons, but I expect you to shower. That is, that is like, literally, the bar is so low at this point, I just expect you, not, maybe not even shower, put on some deodorant so I can't smell you. That would be great. Super appreciate not smelling your BO when I sit at the table. That would be super cool. So, I sit down at the table, trying to look past this, trying to be like, wow, he probably had a hard day. I ask him what he did today. He's like, nothing, nothing. This is, this is what I'm doing today. I actually, I moved a couple days ago and, you know, that was rough, so I haven't done anything. This is pretty much the first time I got out of the house. Yeah, I need to grocery shop later. And I was like, cool, no excuse for being so gross. So I come back with my coffee. I sit down. I come to the realization I'm going to be here for a while. So I accept it. I'm like, so... Tell me about yourself. How, how did you move here? Who are you? What do you like? Whatever. He starts to tell me about himself. He's like, yeah, I work in construction. I have my truck. Do you see my truck out there? Yeah, I painted those rims yesterday. They're matte. I want it all to be matte. I want it blacked out. I need my rims to be black so no one sees me coming, you know, like, because the pigs are out there. The cops are out there. They're just, they're cracking down on trucks. They don't like country boys. We're in Alberta. It's fucking hick town. They don't give a fuck about country boys. So, he talks about his truck, and then, out of nowhere, nowhere, I have not said a word. He hasn't asked me a question. He went from, like, I work in construction, do you see my truck, to what I'm about to tell you verbatim that he said, because I cannot forget this moment. He takes his coffee in his hands, he takes a sip of his coffee with both hands, which I always thought was a weird way to hold your coffee because the cup, like, only requires one. He takes a sip of his coffee, puts it down, looks me right in the eyes, and he's like, So, Ashley, I just wanted to let you know that if this works out, I'm excited for our children and us to be married and bathed in the light of Jesus Christ. And I laughed because when you say something like that to someone on a first date within the first 15 minutes, it's a joke, right? Like you don't sit there and you're like, oh my god, this fucker is serious. But he was. I laughed. I was like, <laughs> it's the first funny thing you've said all this time. Like that's crazy. You're a comedian. I didn't know that. Stone-faced. Stone-faced. He's like, I don't understand what's funny about my religious beliefs. Again, I'm like nervously laughing because maybe he just has a weird sense of humor. Nothing. 
at this point, I just kind of, I go into myself. I'm not at this date anymore, I'm just in my mind, like, how can I leave this moment? How can I never see this person again? How do I get from my seat here to my car? Can I go to the bathroom and sneak out the window? No, he'll see me, he's right in front of the window. Can I start a fire? Can I burn down this building and escape? No, he'll be there too. Oh my god. So <laughs> I'm sitting here inside my head for probably five minutes half listening to this guy go on about how God is the center of his life and how our children would be just godly and how they would be pure and how they would be raised with Christian values and our daughter would be a virgin until marriage and I don't understand, like, I swear, I swear to God, still part of me was like, he, he has to be joking. No one, no one can go into a first date in the first 25 minutes and think that this is a good idea. No one can think that this is how you sell themselves. No one will go on a first date and not put on deodorant. This is all a joke. I'm being punked. But I was not being punked. Ashton Kutcher, day storm, no one came out and said punked. No one did that to me. I bet you're sitting there in front of your computer asking yourself, wow, Ashley, that seems really hard. How did you get out of that? Here's how I got out of that. I got up. I just cut him off mid-sentence. I stood up and I said, I have to pee. That's exactly what I said to him, to his face. He looked disgusted. I didn't care. I went to the bathroom. I peed. I came back. I sat down. I had a drink of my coffee. He started talking again. I stood up and like two minutes later, I said, I have to pee again. He said, wow, you're peeing a lot. I said, I am. So I went pee. I came back. I sat down. I stood up. <laughs> I said, I think I have a bladder infection. I need to go home. And I went home. And I got home. And I had a text from this motherfucker. And he said, wow, Ashley, it was really nice meeting you today. I'm excited to see where this goes. And I blocked him. <laughs> so that's it. My camera battery's gonna die. It's insinuating that I need to stop talking about this and stop traumatizing everyone and stop making everyone feel as awkward as I felt. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If we get to 2,000, I will do another one. Comment down below with your worst date story. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening to my traumatization story. That was horrible grammar. My camera battery's flashing sort of faster, so I'm gonna go now before I lose all this footage and have to retell that terrible story. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you later.